How do freeze dryers? The most popular freeze drying pump is by far the premier pump for good reason. It's an awesome pump. It needs very little maintenance, but that doesn't make it immune to maintenance or repair in the future. Just like anything that's motorized or mechanical, it's susceptible to service over time. So today I wanna do a full breakdown of the premier pump, every single nut and bolt in this. I'm gonna show you where you can get repair parts. I'm gonna show you what each of the uh, parts names are. We're gonna go over some of the common fail points of this vacuum pump and also give you a few tips on how you can get the most life and most mileage out of this premier pump. We have a lovely donor pump today. You can see that this thing has been dropped. It has a bent handle. The housing back here is cracked. It does work, but it's a good donor pump for our purpose today. So the first thing we're gonna do is drain the oil out of this because we're not gonna want a bunch of oil all over our parts and uh, once we pull the seal out. So if you haven't done this, you just need to elevate your pump above whatever you're going into, preferably a harvest right filter. You're gonna twist this little knob to the left and then oil will start to flow. Eventually you're gonna to wanna to tilt this to the front so it gets all of the oil out. Less oil in here is gonna make less mess. Hey everyone, before we get into this video, I just wanted to ask if you could give it a thumbs up if you find it helpful. Also share it amongst other freeze dryers. These types of videos take me a very long time to make and edit and uh, get them ready for you. But I think these kind of videos are needed in the freeze drying community, so make sure you get them into the right hands by sharing them or giving them a like if you found them helpful. While our oil is draining, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off our first part, which is actually gonna be probably one of the biggest concerns of a lot of people. That's gonna be the demister. We can remove just this outside cover off of the demister first, but you kinda of have to just put even pressure with all of your fingers on the outside of this pull out and up at the same time. That'll separate this into two pieces. Otherwise you can just remove the entire demister. This just turns counterclockwise. It's threaded onto this housing. There's gonna be a couple of seals that we're gonna talk about here in a second. Now that the demister's off, you can take a pick, which looks like this. Um, you can also use just a flathead screwdriver and a pinch if you want. There's a, a seal or an O-ring gasket. That is a common thing that will fail over time. The next thing you want to do, if you have not already, is pull this piece apart. You can see now that there's just a little bit of a clip on the end like that. That's what holds this on here. Then we're going to flip this demister over. There's a Phillips screw on the top of this rubber flap here. Pull this flap off of here, and then this actually threads into that plastic housing. And there's your other O-ring. This is your demister filter. Those two O-rings can be replaced. You can also potentially reuse this filter. I have washed it with soap and water. Um, I've used different parts cleaners. You just wanna make sure it's something that's going to evaporate over time. But these will definitely build up with oil over time, so you need something that's gonna break down that oil and get it out of the filter. Next, we're gonna remove this gas ballast valve. And that's gonna require a three millimeter hex key or Allen key. There's just a, a threaded screw in there, a couple washers, a spring, and then another washer. If you take a peek down in there, you can see there's another O-ring right there, also another fail point. And now we can loosen up this handle. 18 millimeter is what this is. These can be pretty difficult once you get them started. You can just use the leverage of the handle to twist it out. Next we'll do the brass gas inlet. It can be pretty stubborn, so you're gonna need some leverage. It's usually on there pretty good. So if you don't have to take that piece out, I would recommend against taking it out. It's usually in there with some sort of sealant or epoxy. It will come out. It's gonna take some, some brute strength to get it out of there. Uh, now that you can see this valve, it's actually a one-way valve. It has a ball in there. It will allow the vacuum to go in one way, but not come back out. Next, I think we're gonna take this rear motor cover off because once we take the front off, that's kind of when the mess happens if there is going to be a mess. So let's take this rear cover off first. There's actually just four screws on the back. Those are Phillips screws. They come out real easy. And now this will just pull off of here and we can expose the power cord and then the, uh, the terminals that go to the motor. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these off of the terminals. So this side is actually connected to your on off switch. This power cord is going up into one side of the switch. The other side of the switch is going to the motor back here. And you can pull these off with something like needle nose pliers. Don't pull by the wire, pull by the metal part that's kind of uh, behind the boot. 
and just go, go gently, otherwise you can end up pulling these boots away from the wires. Last, we need to get that ground wire off. Before we can do that, we need to remove this fan. Now that we have that fan out of the way, we can remove this screw right here. It's a Phillips screw. We can get that ground wire out of the way that is going to the power cord. I like to put these screws back in if they can't, if you can, then you won't lose them and you will also know where they go back into. To get the fan off, there is a little clip that sits behind here and you just need to dig back in there and pop that clip loose. It's kind of in the shape of a horseshoe. And once that's off, we can move this kind of off to the side and pull that fan out. So just wiggle this fan back and forth until it loosens up and then it will just pull all the way off. To remove this switch, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get this on video. I will try my best. There's basically two pressure tabs right in here on both sides, on here and then one on the back as well. You just kinda of need to push in and then pry that. So once you get pressure on both sides, then that will just fall through that opening. There's your switch. Uh, if you want to remove this power cord, you need to take the ground wire off of the motor here. We're gonna to get to that in a second, but you can also push this little plastic piece uh, to allow the, the cord to slip through. So you can get a little bit better access to this if you can remove this top cover. And I'm actually in a good situation now because mine's cracked, so it's not holding on here and it'll just slide off so I can show you what I'm talking about. In a normal circumstance, you need to get three screws moved and there's one way back in here and then there's one on each side back in here you'd have to have a very long allen key to be able to get to it if you can get this cover off then you can get access to the rest of what we need to get to back here so next we need to remove this capacitor from that top cover and there's a little capacitor holder that has smaller Phillips. You just need to remove those and then that capacitor can be removed. And then we need to remove this bottom plate. There needs to be two wiring harnesses removed. One is going to be up here. It's going to slide that out of the way. Second one is going to be right here. It will slide this one out of the way away from the motor, which is going to require a four millimeter Allen key. It's gonna be one, two, three screws. And then this is all gonna pull away. We're still not in the clear yet because we have this wiring going down into the base plate. So we need to get access down in here to get that disconnected from the motor. So let's take these screws out. I'm gonna start with these four big ones right here. Once those are out, this will actually pop through here. And this has a board on it where you're gonna see your wiring terminals. And there is your board. So this plug right here is gonna disconnect that capacitor. This green plug is gonna disconnect the motor. This white plug is also going to the motor. If we flip this around, there's a black wire and a red wire over here. Those were going back up to the switch. They're actually attached to the board. So you're gonna to wanna to pull those through the harness and leave those with the board. And then this ground that is yellow and green, you can detach it here or you can detach it at the motor. So now that is completely separate from the motor. Now we can actually work on feeding these wires through here. Now we can pull the capacitor through. We can also pull the rest of the wires through for the motor. One last thing on this base plate, you can actually remove these rubber feet too if you want. Those are just Phillips screws. And you can also remove these side panels with four Phillips screws. Now we're ready to break into the oil reservoir. The motor is still attached. You're gonna need a four millimeter Allen key you have four bolts that need to come out. They are on each corner of this front housing. Let's remove those. I would put something down under it because there's oil in the oil reservoir even if you completely drained it. So you will have a little bit of oil coming out through this process. A very important thing to note here as we take this last screw out, there is a gasket in between this front housing and this plate right here. If that gasket gets damaged, then it's no good. So you either have to buy a new one or build a new one. So be very careful when you're separating this out. There's gonna be a lot of weight back here on the motor and it's gonna to wanna to pull away depending on how it's sitting. You might also need to take a soft faced mallet or something and tap this to get it to loosen up. 
So there is our gasket around here, or rubber O-ring, whatever you want to call it. It's not really an O, but it is rubber. It can easily get damaged if you stuck a screwdriver or something in there. There will almost certainly be some residual oil in there. You can remove this with a pick, or if you're very careful with a screwdriver, this will come out. Now we're left with a few more parts. So this brass spout right here is an 18 millimeter that is threaded in. Any of this stuff on this front housing, you need to be very careful with. It can strip very easily. It's just aluminum. So once that's out, you can see a, a gasket on there, just a rubber gasket. Um, there's another little plastic bushing inside. As you turn the oil valve, you can see the ball valve where it will let it flow and then not flow. To remove this valve, you need a tiny Phillips and you can't even see the screw down in there, so I'm gonna do my best. Once that's loose, this will just pull off of here. And then if you turn this little brass piece right here a couple times, you can wiggle it so this ball will fall out. Then once you see, once the ball falls out, you can see the other side of the bushing for that ball up in there. This brass piece, I'm not exactly sure how it even comes out. It might be um, machined into there or something. I don't really wanna mess with it, honestly, and I hope that you don't ever have to mess with it. Everything else should be replaceable as far as if, if it was leaking or something, you should be able to just put new bushings in it. But make sure that you are paying attention to the way this ball came out because it will only go in one way, it will only function one way. You can see the slit right there will go onto this brass piece. One last thing we can tear down on this front cover is the sight glass. There are a couple different versions of this sight glass. I believe this is the newer version. There's also a round version. This is gonna take a T25 Torx, and there's just two screws with those Torx fittings. Once those are removed, you can take this front plate off. Sometimes the glass and the gasket will come out at the same time. Sometimes just the plate will come out. Um, there is a piece of glass that sits in between that plate. That gasket's a real interesting one. I'm not sure that if that's something that can you, you can get easily. We will try and stock them if we can. But this is definitely something that fails a lot. Uh, the sight glass will start leaking. It will be because of that missing or damaged gasket. Now we're down to the nitty gritty of this whole thing. The motor and the pump. There's four bolts. They're very long bolts that go all the way in back into this plate. They're going to be a five millimeter hex key. And you'll notice that this pump is extremely clean. It has not been run. So I'm, I'm assuming this was just a return or something from Harvest Right. Uh, results may vary greatly. Sometimes these things are very, very rusted out. Sometimes there's food particles. Sometimes there's just all kinds of gunk and buildup and all kinds of things in here. So you may want to take some sort of parts cleaner, brake cleaner, carb cleaner, something that's gonna cut through all that gunk and just uh, wipe all of this, this stuff out so you have a clean uh, pump to work with. You're not just fighting all the gunk and grime and stuff the entire time. So once those are loosened up, you can pull these through. There is a lock washer and a regular washer on these, so make sure you don't lose those. And ever so gently wiggle this back and forth you don't want to damage this gasket that sits in between the trestle and the motor. Uh, ideally, you can reuse this. Sometimes you cannot. We will stock them if you happen to damage it or you need a replacement. There's a three-pointed coupling on the back of the motor, and then there's also a rubber absorbing coupler that mounts up with the motor. And then you can see where this gasket, where the pump meets the motor, is very important because it holds back all of the oil from going into the motor. You can remove this gasket very carefully if you take a razor blade. And then before you put this back together, you're gonna to wanna to clean up all of the contact points for where that gasket is going to touch metal. We're gonna remove these three screws right here. These are a three millimeter Allen. This will give us access to this collar and then also access to this outer seal. So you can turn this by hand and actually hear the pump movement. This should move freely, it should sound smooth, and it, you should be able to hear the pump motion. So before we take the collar off and get access to this outer seal, we need to take this three-pronged uh, drive wheel off, and that's gonna require a two and a half millimeter Allen key. After that's off, you can remove this collar with the replaceable seal, 
and then that gives you access to this replaceable o-ring as well and then we can take a four millimeter hex and get access to this intake for the pump and this will also give us access to a filter in there the filter is just a mesh screen it's metal it can be totally cleaned up but what this does is stop really big chunks from getting sucked up into the pump once that intake is removed, that gives you access to these other little inlet ports. I'm not sure exactly what these are called. These are also a four millimeter. You can take these off, clean them up. Uh, you can see if there's any blockage in there while you're in there. The next part we need to do is take this collar off and it's actually three different pieces. There's a washer on top. There is a small O-ring that sits right here. Looks like this. And then that sits down in this uh, bushing we'll call it that looks like this that bottom bushing is typically on there pretty good and i would definitely recommend using a mallet and wood or something brass something that's not going to mar the metal but will have enough force to get that uh, bushing away from the rest of the the pump if you're very careful you can stick something like a shim or something wood something soft on the bottom here and then get something under it and try and pry up. You don't wanna damage any of this metal. Next, we need to remove these pins right here. So I'm gonna show you side by side. This is a completed pump. This is one that has been partially disassembled. So what you need to do is tap these pins out with a punch, preferably brass so it does not mar the metal. You wanna punch them from this direction. Once those are out, you're gonna take a mallet and tap this lightly just enough to put enough pressure to break this free. You're going to see the front veins, I believe they're called. That's these rubber pieces right here. So if, that ta if you tap that loose, this will actually pull out of here. You can remove these veins and they have two springs. So sometimes they come out uh, on one side or the other, but they're just sitting in there. These veins do go bad over time and it will reduce your pump suction. These can be replaced. Uh, the other ones are a little trickier. Before we look at those, I wanna show you the inside of this front part. There is another seal right there that can be replaced. And then you can also get this front piece out of here to access the other side of that. And to access those rear side veins, you have to separate these two pieces right here. That will take some convincing. A light tap repeatedly should do the trick. And then now you can see the smaller rear veins. Same situation where there are two springs holding them together. These are, as far as I can tell, specific to Harvest Right pumps. So getting fresh, brand new ones may be impossible. I, I don't know. Uh, what would be great is if someone could uh, reproduce these somehow and um, resell them. As of right now, I don't know anywhere that you can get these from. And then when you get these two separated, you will also find a spring and then a little rubber plug that will sit down in this hole right here. And that is all the pump disassembly entails. It is not an easy task, I will warn you uh, in advance. If it makes more sense for you, you can buy one of these that is a known working pump uh, from freeze drying supplies. You just need to reach out to us at freeze drying supplies at gmail.com. We do have these parts available. We do not put them on the website just because it's a, it's kind of an inventory nightmare, I would say. Uh, so you can just email us and we can help you through this process. If you need parts uh, for the pump or for anything on any nut and bolt on this entire freeze dryer pump, we stock all of the parts for the Premier Pump. Some new, some are usable, used parts. I know if you have freeze dryer problems or vacuum pump problems, they can be very frustrating and we will do our best to get you back up and running. Hey, you, are you unlocking your full potential as a freeze dryer? If you're not signed up for the freeze drying community email list, you're missing out on pro freeze drying tips and freeze dryer giveaways, the latest sales, inspirational people in the freeze drying community, as well as invaluable food storage recipes. And most important, unlocking your inner freeze drying guru. Click the first link in the description to get signed up.